Hey everyone, how you doing? I'm Lazo, the MST Guy, and welcome to the show. Today, we're going to be looking at Mystery Science Theater 3000, Episode 107, Robot Monster, the infamous post-apocalyptic film featuring a guy in a gorilla suit with a robot head. You made that up, didn't you? What? A man wearing a gorilla suit with a robot head? That can't be real. I mean, who in their right mind would make a movie like that? Oh, I think I know someone. Did I hear someone mention my name? No, I don't think we were talking about you. Of course, nobody ever wants to talk to the evil robot. Well, you did kidnap us. Eh, details. Yeah, I'll detail you. Uh, anyway, uh, this week's invention exchange for the Mads is the Flaming Whoopee Cushion. It's a self-inflating model, and it's filled with real methane gas. Get the picture? Larry? Ready? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> What do you think? And Joel's invention is the Cumber Bubble Bund. My new invention, it's called the Cumber Bubble Bund. But before we get into the movie, we have two, yes, count them two episodes of Commando Cody. Ugh, are you serious? Yeah, Simon, uh, but don't worry, they're, they're not too bad this week. The first episode is called Flight to Destruction. It picks up with Cody on the bridge of death when it explodes. Of course, Cody manages to escape and makes it back to his headquarters. The moon men plant some stuff, something about a ray gun and a bank. Okay, but I'll need some more money. My purse is on the counter, honey. We get another fight in the lab, and not too sure why they haven't started locking the front door. It is a good thing scientists can really fight. The goons kidnap Cody's girlfriend and Servo sneezes. Bless you. Whoa. Zunt. You're not supposed to do that. That stirred up my rums real bad. Cody takes off after them, who are now in a plane, and after a little exchange of gunfire, the pilot parachutes out, and Cody climbs in just before the plane crashes into the mountains. Oh, how riveting. And just our luck that we get to see the next episode right away, huh? Yeah, just our luck. So, Radar Men from the Moon Episode 5 begins. This installment is aptly titled, Murder Car. So we see Cody catch the plane, the pilot jump out, but this time we see Cody and his girlfriend jump out of the plane just before it crashes. Cody catches up to the Moon Men when they crash their stolen ambulance into Cody's car. With the two vehicles rolling down the side of the mountain, we end this episode. So what did you think, Simon? too bad this week though i'm sure that cody and his sidekick just jumped out of their car before they hit yeah probably it seems like that happens quite a bit in these command of cody episodes uh hey wizardo what'd you think oh please are you kidding me there's no way they survived that crash the next episode must be their funeral or something right you think the next episode of command of cody which is titled hills of death is going to be cody's funeral well maybe he's buried in the side of a hill Hence the name Hills of Death. I don't think so. Uh, while he's pondering the fate of Commando Cody, let's take a look at the first host segment. Well, as long as we're talking about reality here, uh, let's talk about that pumpkin head for a second. You know, even a ninth grader could see that with all the heaviness and position of the rockets on Cody's back, he'd be cartwheeling his butt all over Southern California. All right, but Tom, remember, it's just a serial. It's only a show. Well, don't give me any more brain teasers and my head won't blow up. You okay, I thought it was Kirk? a rush. Robot monster. Oh. So the movie begins with Johnny and his family enjoying a picnic while these two archaeologists are digging in a cave. After a little nap, Johnny runs back to the cave and I think he's struck by lightning or something and this little bit of nonsense happens. Oh, the movie's been attacked by a nature film. I have no idea what they have to do with the movie. Just, just go with it. Johnny wakes up and finds that the cave is now inhabited by Roman, the robot monster. This is what comes from teaching apes sign language. Wait a minute. Roll that footage of him running up to the cave. It inspires a child's natural curiosity. Now roll that footage of him waking up. Uh, that's all right. Do you see it? See what? Look at his pants. He's wearing jeans. And here, he's wearing shorts. You know, Simon, ordinarily I'd be right there with you on a continuity error, but when the movie's antagonist is a man in a gorilla suit with a robot helmet, 
I'm just gonna give the movie a pass on this one. So Roman calls his home planet and we find out that Roman has killed off the entire human race, except for about eight people. And there are perhaps eight people left on Earth? Not perhaps, precisely. Oh, excuse me, precisely eight humans. Of course, little Johnny overhears all this and races back to his makeshift fallout house thing to tell the others. We get a bunch of exposition about how Roman can't see the survivors inside the barricade due to the electric fence, and of course, they explain just how deadly Roman actually is. Unless we can find his weak spot. We also learn that there might be some survivors on a space platform, which is presumably in space. Do you think we still have a garrison on a space platform? Roman hasn't destroyed that yet. Well, it could be. Roman calls them up and gives them an offer that nobody could refuse. Do yourselves, and I promise you a painless death. Uh, we're looking at a few other offers first. And with that, I think it's time for another host break. Servo, servo, come in, my faithful servant. I am here, your excellency. Why have not you killed the human? Because he gives me crunchy treats, and he empties my load pan. But he is human, and unfit to live. But he's kind of cute, he has good bone structure, and he can drive a stick. So, Roman calls up our survivors again to let them know that the two survivors that tried to leave the planet in a spaceship are dead, because he destroyed it. And in this shot, yeah, you can see the hand holding up the ship. He also destroys the space platform, so now they are the last six survivors on Earth. I just saw the hand. So the survivors call Roman in an attempt to plead with him to let them live, but after Roman sees Alice, he decides that he wants to meet her face to face. But although I cannot verify it, I feel that she will understand. No! What? A robot falling in love with a human? That's preposterous! Oh, come on, Lazardo. You're telling me that there isn't some human girl out there that gets your oil pumping? Well... Yeah? Maybe one. Who is she? Yeah, who is she? Oh, you wouldn't know her. She lives in... well, away from you. Oh, alright. It's Martha Washington. Martha Washington? George Washington's wife. You are aware she died in the 1800s, right? See, I knew you'd understand. Anyway, let's get back to the episode. We get a few minutes of Roman wandering around when Johnny meets up with him. Did you see that, Simon? Yep, I saw it. So what we have here is apparently an onlooker watching them shoot this scene, and I guess nobody on the production team saw her, or if they did, they didn't care. Back to the movie, Roman tells us why he came to Earth. Your people were getting too intelligent. We could not wait until you were strong enough to attack us. We had to attack you first. Oh yeah, that clearly makes a lot of sense. Okay, so Alice and the other scientists were out looking for Johnny when they spotted Roman. They hid in the bushes, and after Roman left, they uh, got a little busy in the bushes. Oh, he deflowered her. Our two lovebirds head back to the shack, get married, then leave for their honeymoon. The little girl catches up to them to give them a present or something, and wouldn't you know it, Roman shows up and kills the little girl. It's just terrible. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this movie took a twisted turn. Yeah, just a bit. And just in time for the next host break. Come on, you guys aren't supposed to have human ailments. Besides, I think it's kind of cool in a dark, surrealistic sort of way. Well, so is standing in front of a, a speeding snowmobile. No, you don't get it. You see, isn't it kind of weird? It's like there's a guy in a gorilla suit, and there's, he's got a robot head, and inside he's got kind of a bunch of clay. I mean, I've seen dolly paintings that make more sense than this movie does. Roman meets up with the newlyweds, throws the guy off a cliff, and kidnaps Alice. The remaining humans decide to lure Roman out of his cave so they can sneak in to rescue Alice. Uh -huh. He can get us in the ravine if he promises easy death. Uh huh. And then he kills us, right? You slip in and grab Alice when he comes out after me. That might work. He has no time to lose. Oh yeah, this is sure to work. Yeah, and then we get this bit of awkwardness. Now cut that out. I don't like you alien types touching our women folk. That's it, that's it, you come. Thankfully, the other three humans give Roman a call and they agree to meet for the final showdown. All right, I will meet you in the ravine when the sun passes over the mountains. Little Johnny shows up first and gets Roman to leave the cave while the other two run in to rescue Alice. 
Bet it really smells in that cave. But before Roman can completely kill Johnny, Roman's boss decides that Roman just isn't working out and shoots a lightning bolt at him. Roman's dead, and so we're treated to more bizarre footage of alligators and dinosaurs and earthquakes and. Oh, of course, it was all a dream. I just want to make sure you get up with everything you fell down with. I found him next to that flimsy plot device. So, with Johnny all better, we end with this. Um, I don't think it is. You ever had a deja vu, Joel? Huh? What? Is this the end of the film, Joel? I think it is. You ever had a deja vu, Joel? Huh? What? What? What in the name of Dallas is this crap? Yeah, sorry, Simon. It was all a dream. And while we ponder the deeper themes of this film, Joel and the bots head back to the bridge for their final wrap-up. Fact. Roman the Roman destroyed almost all of Earth's population save for six refugees, yet they all lived within a short walk of his cave. Mm -hmm. Fact, mm -hmm. Roman the Roman used a cosmic ray that kept the cities of the world intact to be enjoyed later by all Roman. Yet he lived in a cave, and not even a very good cave. Yeah, yeah, slag heap. So there you go, Mystery Science Theater 3000, Episode 107, The Robot Monster. With the exception of the Commando Cody shorts, I really like this episode. The movie is just goofy enough that I can really see why it has a bit of a cult following on its own outside of the MST world. And this is one movie that I would probably recommend the MST version as well as the original version. You can pick up this episode on DVD from the Shout Factory. Now in my next episode, we're going to be looking at Mystery Science Theater 3000 episode 108, The Slime People, as well as episode 6 of Commando Cody. Oh goody! More Commando Cody. Yeah, you better just brace yourself, Simon. We have a few more to go. I can't wait. Alright, Wizardo, that's it for this episode. What'd you think? You know you're in there. Open up. Uh oh, I gotta go. The hell? Did he just leave us? Uh, I'm not sure. I. Well. Uh, I guess we'll see you next time. Maybe? Bye. Roman calls them up and gives this and gives gives the sir why can't I say that? Roman calls them up and gives this Roman calls them up and gives this the Roman calls them up and gives us <laughs>